Welcome to ESI Africa Insights. For this episode, I am speaking with Professor Vali Padiachi, who is a strategic advisor to the AMEU, which is amongst his many titles. Welcome, Professor Padiachi. Good morning, Nicolette, uh, to you and the ESI Africa views, and, and I'm glad to be back on your, on your fabulous show. Thank you so much. So I'd like to start off with the fact that ESCOM recently reported a 3.6 billion rand spend on diesel in just 30 days to keep the lights on. This is quite uh, uh, a lot of money. And uh, how sustain sustainable is this approach and what alternative strategies could they be looking at? I'm glad you asked the question to, to start this conversation because it's a very critically important question. Uh, let's take a step back. Uh, why is ESCOM using this diesel? They're obviously using the diesel through the open cycle gas turbines, which, is, which we call OCGTs. And just bear in mind that open cycle gas turbine is part of the energy mix of the ESCOM fleet. But having said that, uh, open cycle gas turbines should only be used or brought onto the grid during peaking times. And it should be more the exception than the rule uh, when they do that, because uh, our uh, open cycle gas turbine, meaning ESCOM, is actually diesel-fired gas turbines. And as we know, diesel is expensive, and uh, you've alluded to that. But having said that, it's seemingly that we are not managing the peaking uh, regime uh, effectively and efficiently, meaning that, that uh, ESCOM is using the open cycle gas turbines more often than it should be. Okay. Now, why is that so? And it, and it gets back to the crux of your, your question, is that just on a number of issues. Um, firstly, the, the grid, the national grid, which is owned by ESCOM and Unix, but of course, uh, ESCOM owns the bulk of the grid, is, is at a very tentative uh, stage. Uh, it's not performing well. There are inherent risks. So, so to, to balance supply and demand, which, which is what the system operator does, they've got to bring in the open cycle gas turbines to beef up the supply. Mm -hmm. and, and as I've said so, they're doing that more often than, uh, than it should be. And, and to get to the tail end of your question, uh, to get it right, uh, they've, get, uh, they've got to get the grid um, sort of strengthened. Uh, but there should be... Um, uh, the reserve margin, about 10 to 15 percent, and they should curtail or arrest the number of uh, breakdowns and, uh, and get the maintenance right. So, so let's, and maybe one more point, they should be bringing in more electrons, which I think is a bit slow yeah. uh, in terms of more new generation, to renewable energy than other technologies. And maybe a final point, in terms of uh, uh, demand side management, they should be doing that more effectively. All of that needs to be done as a priority, and we're not doing uh, that well in that respect. Mm. Although there's a lot of effort by ESCOM and the government in trying to do that, uh, Nicolette. Right, right. So that brings me to the question of the, the end users and how ESCOM communicates with them and how they explain the reasoning wow. behind all of this expenditure, why we're having load shedding. Uh, what is the, the best way to communicate with the customer? How long is a piece of string? I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, that's a very important question. Uh, uh, I can attest to it because I talk a lot in the media, but I, but I think um, to get to the point, uh, effective and efficient communication is critical uh, in a crisis situation. I think we're still in a crisis situation. Uh, uh, for ESCOM to explain the reasons, the energy decisions that they take uh, and get the buy-in from the customers. Now, here yeah, the, the customers, I would include the ordinary customers, the end-use customers, meaning the residential, commercial, and industrial, but also the media. And, and the media is a critical component of this communication because if you don't get it right with the media, uh, the media also... Uh, there are lobbyists. They also have certain agendas. But, but I think the safest way from my experience is to stick to the facts 
uh, be a lot more transparent, uh, be a lot more collaborative, and and also work with the community. And and ESCOM should be reaching out to different forums, uh, different sectors of the population, both in the private sector and, and public sector. And bottom line, in whatever types of communication, strategic communication, it has to be talking towards you know, getting the customer on your side. But more importantly, and I'm talking from my personal experience, it's, it's about learning. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that if the, if the reader or the listener is able to understand uh, what you're talking about. Uh, and it doesn't, doesn't have to be only positive news. It can be negative news. But if you are forthright as ESCO, maybe even the Munich, uh, as honest as you can, uh, I think the public and the media buys into that. Uh, into that. Thank you so much. Only I do have one last question for you, and that bringing it back to the open um, cycle gas turbines. Uh, these turbines have been in operation for quite a number of years. Do you feel that there is any risk to continuing to operate them at such a high level? Yes, uh, I think there is a risk. Uh, we are the talk as an experienced generation engineer uh, who's worked with open cycle gas turbines early on in my career. Yes, the open cycle gas turbines, as I've alluded to, is, is meant for a low load factor, meaning that you cannot use them too often uh, like would you would use other uh, rotating equipment, and uh, and as I mentioned, they should only be used in an in an emergency. And I think I'm of the opinion I stand to be corrected. The load factor should be under 10 percent. I think that's what they're designed for. I stand to be corrected, but I think we've had cases where we moved beyond 10 percent. And my fear is that because these are rotating equipment, there's a lot of heat being generated in the component parts. The risk of failure is great, but touch wood and thank God, for the last few years, the open cycle gas turbines have kept the country going in terms of minimal uh, load shedding, but we will not push our luck too far. Because if, if those open cycle gas turbines fail, especially now in the middle of winter, we could be back to load shedding at high levels, uh, Nicola. Well, uh, that is a warning then for ISCOM that they need to look into that. Yeah, yes, yes, that's a, especially I think open cycle gas turbines must be used for what they've been designed for. In other words, used in an emergency, not beyond emergency. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor Padiachi. Thank you very much. My pleasure to be here. And thank you for watching. Tune in for the next Industry Insights and have a powerful day.